Velociraptor Mongoliensis, made popular by the Jurassic Park franchise, you wouldn't be in the minority to believe that the Velociraptor sounded something like this. This sound has terrified moviegoers for decades. There's no other sound quite like it, created by modifying the sound of a goose, horse, and tortoise's mating. This predatory theropod lived in the late Cretaceous period over 71 million years ago. It was first discovered in Mongolia, East Asia on 11th of August 1923 by Peter Kaizen who stumbled across a crushed skull and toe claw at the dig site in the Gobi Desert. The Velociraptor has become synonymous for being the 6 foot tall, highly intelligent pack hunting killing machine. But is this really what it was? To understand how this creature would have sounded like, you must first understand how the creature functioned as an animal. A lot of people grew up knowing the Velociraptor from the Jurassic Park movies, but I'm sorry to say, that animal is completely fictional. In reality, the Velociraptor mongoliensis was approximately half a meter tall, measuring around 2 meters in length, and weighed up to 33 pounds, and was also covered in feathers. It was still an incredibly vicious creature, using its 3.5 inch sickle claw to penetrate the jugular vein or windpipe during combat. When thinking about what dinosaurs would have sounded like, you also have to consider when it would need to make the sound and why it would need to make a sound. Now, as pack hunting of Velociraptors has been popularized thanks to Jurassic Park, would it have needed to call out to other raptors? While the theory that it was a pack hunter has also been called into question, as forming packs is an incredibly complex social behavior that's not common in dinosaurs. However, various dromosaur fossils and footprints have been found in close proximity of each other indicating they would have indeed formed groups. Though unlike wolves, they wouldn't have formed close bonds, and instead would have formed packs during certain situations to gain strength in either attacking large prey or to scavenge. There's another reptile currently around that also uses similar tactics, the Komodo dragon. This animal is mainly an independent hunter, being able to take down victims 10 times its own body weight. However, they can be found teaming up with other dragons in order to take down large or wounded prey. From this, we get a good idea on how the Velociraptors would have communicated. So with this taken into consideration, what did the Velociraptor really sound like? Now there's one modern bird that I think gives us a close look at what the Velociraptor really sounded like, and that is… a different kind of raptor. The Stella's Sea Eagle is a 20 pound modern day bird, the heaviest eagle in the world, with a wingspan of up to 8.5 feet, commonly being found in Siberia, Russia. This bird has many familiar characteristics that would have been seen in the ancient Velociraptor. And if you just take a listen to its vocals, you'll soon understand why I say they're very similar. <laughs> Mm, Both the Stella Sea Eagle and the Velociraptor have very similar skull structures with ear canals that resonate in similar frequencies, which means they both had very close ranges of auditory perception. It's this kind of communication that would have been helpful in groups, alerting other members of the same species that there's large prey that needs taking down. However, as discussed in my previous video that the syrinx was an evolutionary trait, the Velociraptor would have had to make sounds by inflating its esophagus with air, and then using the surrounding muscular tissue to put pressure on it in just the right way so that air travelling back out the throat would make this cackling noise. This technique is also used in the Eurasian Batern, a species of bird that scientists often research when looking into how dinosaurs communicate. <coughs> So with this knowledge, I have created a rough idea on how the Velociraptor may have communicated, using the Stella Sea Eagle as a basis for how Velociraptor may have communicated with other raptors, whilst beefing up the audio just slightly to make it the same scale as a Velociraptor, but also including the inhaling audio from the Eurasian Batern. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> 
Like the Stellar Sea Eagle, the Velociraptor was also covered in feathers and would have used them to its advantage in certain situations. So, even though it wouldn't have had quite the range of communication like modern day birds due to the lack of a syrinx, it would have been able to fluff up its feathers in order to present to other dinosaurs whether it was angry, ready for mating, happy or hungry. So, there you have it. What the Velociraptor would have sounded like, or at least, something very close thanks to its modern day relatives. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, it would help us out a lot. And remember to subscribe to us at Dangerville to become a resident today. I've been your host Alistair, and we'll see you in the next one.